Welcome to the App Advisory Show, your fortnightly dose of all things cloud accounting, apps, and app advisory. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the App Advisory Show. So I've got uh, Tim Dimitri, I'm going to look at me getting that wrong straight away. I'm going to, Tim, I'm going to let you say your name because uh, we've tried a few times and I've nearly got it right and then uh, failed on the big live appearance. Uh, so Tim, Tim, do you want to introduce yourself? Yep, I'm Tim Dimitriou, the um, founder and CEO of Pencil Pay. Cool, great. Um, so um, it's uh, morning over here. It's going to be, what time of day is it over there? It's quarter past seven uh, at night. The uh, the same day. <laughs> the same day, right? So just a bit later. Is it? Are we going to have a good day? Is it going to be a good day for me, or is it like? I, I feel your... like it is. I feel like yeah, it good. is. Yeah. Cool. Every day um, is a good day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Of course it is. Um, so yeah, I'm in the. Uh, it's a bit darker here in the UK. We're still got just getting light. Um, so uh, yeah, slightly different days. But Tim, really excited to talk to you today. Yeah, Want to find out a little bit. No worries. Uh, I want to find a little bit more about you, uh, a little bit more about the solution. Um, and um, really, just a, it's always good to find out sort of founders and people who are heavily involved in these solutions, their opinions and what they're seeing um, from their perspective. So so we'll, we'll, we'll crack straight into it. Do you want to tell us a bit more about Pencil Pay? Yeah, sure. Um, so we, we build application and payment software for product suppliers. So um, usually product suppliers, um, they offer payment terms and they offer that to their wholesale customers, so B2B. Um, we, we often call ourselves um, a practice ignition for product businesses. Um, the whole idea of making it frictionless um, for a bookkeeper or an accountant to be able to create a proposal or a cost estimate, then I guess send it and get paid really easily. Um, it's a really simple concept say 10 years ago in the professional services space but um you know it's obviously had the desired effect on cash flow and labor efficiencies and that type of thing and we try and mirror that type of idea in the um uh, for product suppliers um you know where they can you know onboard their customers and uh, with a safe payment method and they can do a risk assessment on those customers because they're giving them a lot of stock at the end of the day and then, um, you know, and they can um, take payments from them, um, direct debit, credit cards, that type of thing. And then, um, and then kind of reconcile their accounts. So all the way from, you know, application to reconciliation type of thing. Um, and where did this idea come from? Like, I think you said, like, you've been going for a couple of years now, a few years. Yes. So where did this it's come from? It's an interesting story. The, um, I kind of um, stumbled across the, the idea, but um, being on the other side of it. So... In, uh, in 2018, I took over a cafe and, um, you know, I'd done a lot of hospitality work when I was a kid and um, went and did a number of other things for seven or eight years um, in, in professional services. And then um, when, I, when I went back into, into the cafe world stupidly, um, I had to sign up with about 25 um, suppliers. So, pro- so the product suppliers, so my coffee supplier and fruit and veg and poultry, and packaging, et cetera, coffee. And... Um, they all had paper-based credit applications. So I spent an awfully long time signing up for accounts for all of them, 30-day accounts, seven-day accounts, et cetera. And um, what that led um, me to be doing is, is whinging and moaning in, in the cafe. And um, a friend of mine, Greg, who's a software developer, he came in and we, we spoke about um, the problem. Um, and it was just, it was weird the way it worked out. He, um, you know, he came back to me the next day with a, with a, um, with basically um, some, some basic solution architecture written down, and he said we can fix this problem pretty quickly. But um, well, then we looked at it and we said we have to go supplier side because they're the ones who are who are stuffing it up with with all the with the um, paper forms. So um, that's kind of where the where the idea came from. Um, real world problem, which is which is really good. It just means there is a problem, which is handy. And and, and yeah, that's kind of that's how the business started. Brilliant. So it was a cafe problem, like you say, a real problem. Know a friend who's can can is, is handy with writing some code. Mm-hmm. Came back on a, on a piece of paper and said, "What do you reckon? Give it a go." Absolutely, absolutely. It Brilliant. was um, it was good, and we got we got moving pretty quick. And um, yeah, then you know, if, if only a few years on, we're we're in market product and and um and growing really fast. So it's good. It's been a really good ride. When you when you came up with that concept, so when you thought oh, there might be a solution, did you go and speak to some other like hospitality businesses to see if it would fly and check? You know, did, what, what was your sort of um, validity on it being a, a solution you could actually take to market? 
yeah, for sure. This is the biggest, um, the thing that makes you most nervous about building software is that no one's going to use it. So, um, so we, before we built the product, um, I obviously had all of my product suppliers from my cafe. So that it was a good starting point to have the conversations with them. But um, really where we got a bit of a break was we, um, a friend of mine owned a large commercial laundry and the commercial laundry is good because it's both, um, both selling goods being the, you know, the other laundry materials, but also selling services. So they, you know, they deliver it, but they also um, launder the, you know, they launder the, um, the products that they're selling as well. So um, it was a really good, um, really good all encompassing um, customer to start with. And, we spent about six months with them and their accounts staff prior to even building um, because, you know, Greg, my business partner, he's built, you know, 300 projects with some really big companies. And it was kind of, um, it was the kind of thing where he, he kind of knew better. So he knew that we needed to understand it first before we, before we kind of um, put the, uh, put a shovel in dirt type of thing. Yeah, and, um, and, and yeah, that's kind of how we got started and we slowly built the product and, we kind of, we weren't doing it um, 100% full time at the very, very start. And then we kind of got into a, um, into an accelerator, which was, um, we, we kind of, we had to pitch a number of times, got into a, an accelerator called Startup Bootcamp in, um, in Victoria. And uh, we were the only Australian team in that, in that accelerator. It was nine, nine kind of foreign teams and us. Um, and it was, it was a really good experience and great to speak to people about, um, you know, how, how, how that problem fared overseas. Um, and if the if the problem was actually a global problem or not, and it turns out that um, certainly in every um, every Western country it is. It's a it's you know the idea of trade credit is um, is as old as uh, as old as Jesus. So so uh, so um, so yeah, I guess that's kind of um, that kind of validated the, the the problem and the size of the problem for us. And then really it was just a matter of getting in there and building the product around a couple of early suppliers and spending an awful lot of time with them and talking to their customers and onboarding their customers and that type of thing. Okay, so you've got quite a lot of troubleshooting and quite a lot of upfront research and investment of time uh, just to understand the problems. And then it sounds like the accelerator did what it's meant to and sort of accelerated you on at that point when you had all that sort of knowledge. Yeah, the accelerator made us, made us be full-time on it. That was the, because it's a full-time three months. You have to, you can't work, you can't do anything like that. You've got to stop your life for three months and then do it and then just do it. Um, and that's, that's what got us full-time. And thank God, because um, we were, you know, we were toying around with other things and had some other projects going, but we kind of dumped them, went to the accelerator and then the rest is history. Yeah, sometimes that commitment and focus can really yeah. make the difference, <laughs> can't it? You can have a lot of things which might do something. Um, but yeah, to, to put the focus into that um, is amazing. So is it, um, are you primarily in Australia as a product or are you starting to branch out? Like what's the, what's the geography of it all? Yeah, so, so um, we launched in, you know, we look at our launch as our launch in the Zero App Store. That's really the, you know, the place where we, where we yeah. kicked off. And that, that was kind of mid 2020. And we, we always said that we need, we need a couple of years to try and, um, to try and, um, get product market fit. That's probably the, the first thing we were looking for is product market fit and you know having users that are using it every day. Um, we feel like we're we're pretty much there and we know who our ideal customers are. So now we've um, you know we're we're in the midst of building our US product at the moment. Um, so we 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 originally built the product to be multi currency um, and multi country. So we've um, we've we've got it built. So we're just connecting things like payment gateways and that type of thing internationally at the moment so we'll be um launched in the us in three 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 and a half weeks and we've got we've already got we already got customers over there which is good so we've already got customers that are um, ready to go over there and um we've got some really good partners from you know um dear systems and, and unleashed and those kind of those kind of platforms that we partner with and um you know we've got some good referrals and some international referrals which has been a really good starting point and then um then we'll be kicking off in the uk um i would say you know probably three four months after that i'd say because for us to enter a new country is about three to four weeks of dev work, um, but because right. the rest of the rest of the platform's kind of built for it. All right, thank you. Cool. So next uh, next venture is US. Get that bedded in, and then hit the UK. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Right, well, Absolutely. We have got listeners from all those areas, so hopefully they'll uh, they'll, they'll awesome. Uh, they'll uh, kick into that and uh, and take you up on uh, when the solution's available. So uh, I'd like to just know some of the key things around uh, your products, uh, some features, 
uh, maybe what you've got coming up or what's been recently added. So it's, it's your it's your chance to pitch a couple of the, the key parts really of, of what uh, what's the product's really majoring at. Yeah, sure. So um, I'll probably start um, start by just outlining the type of customers that it's that it works for because um, the features really come from that. So. Um, our, our focus really is the um, SME product suppliers. So, um, you know, they're turning over under 100 million usually. Um, uh, they've got a large volume of customers, um, but with maybe smaller transaction sizes. So, you know, their invoices are $10,000 and under thereabouts. So you're really looking at FMCG and alcohol producers and health products and fashion, footwear, apparel, that kind of thing. Um, and um, really the two, the two core areas of our platform are the, app the application manager and then the, um, all the various payment solutions that we've got. So the application manager, um, the way it works is the wholesaler or supplier can, um, or the product business can create their um, credit application forms in the space of about five minutes. And um, they've got the lot in them. So, you know, they can select out of, you know, 50 different trading terms, you know, multiple payment types, um, you know, personal guarantees, credit checks, all the rest of it. So we've plugged in a lot of functionality um, where you can use as much or as little as you like. Um, so um, they create them um, and then they just they paste a, a, um, a iframe up on their website and that acts as their own credit application portal. So the forms get branded up for them, matches up with their colors and fonts and all that type of thing that they have and can go up on their website. And then they start onboarding either um, brand new customers can go and create a new credit application where they're applying for payment terms or and a um, you know and an, or an existing customer you know um, what a big thing is um, doing a backfill of existing customers and getting them onto you know direct debit or getting them onto credit card payments um, that's become really popular and especially throughout COVID with um, suppliers trying to protect their cash flow so that's where you know we've got a large portion of our signed up customers from. Um, and then, um, you know, the good thing is there's a lot of automation built into it. So what, what used to happen or what still happens, unfortunately, <laughs> to this day is there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of paper and pen and there's a lot of um, PDF attachments to, uh, to emails that go out um, for these forms. And you know, as well as I do, that process is broken and it's the bad handwriting and there's data entry and all the things that we hate, um, just all encapsulated in that process. So what we've tried to do is try to make sure that you can verify all the details on it. Um, we connect in with um, ASIC in Australia, which is the Australian Securities um, and Investment Commission. Um, in you know in in the US, there's um, yeah the US has its own. The UK they've got Companies House, so we'll do the same there. And um, it basically means that you you know exactly who you're doing business with. Um, the contract says the right company name and company number. And um, all that data from the application, once it's been completed and approved, all goes directly into your internal systems. So there's no data entry along with that. And uh, it really just automates that process and a customer can place an order. And um, so that's the application manager. And then the payments manager. So what we've done recently is we've, we've um, re really built it, built it out a lot. So initially what we did was um, we would just do payments from tokenized credit card details or, or bank accounts, um, right. similar to, to your, your go cardlesses and that type of thing yeah. of the world. Um, what we've done recently is we've really built the product out for our particular customer type. And a couple, we've, a couple of the things we did was we did 50, 60 hours of interviews last year of product suppliers and just asked them exactly what they wanted in, in, in payments. And one of the big things was they wanted a way to automate payments through um, deposits. So um, taking a deposit previously was really difficult and that have some of them would create multiple invoices and, um, and it just wasn't easy because a lot of it has to be done via their inventory system. Then it has to be payments have to be marked off and they have to wait for customers to transfer and all that type of thing. So it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, what we built is, um, you know, into Unleashed and Deer Systems um, is a way for a product supplier to be able to automate their deposit taking process. Um, to be, and then you know post the payments to post the prepayments to um, you know to quote stage and sales order stage and and sales invoice stage rather than posting it directly to zero or mild and those type of businesses. So yeah. um, really really honing in on the issues that affect our particular customers rather than the general you know the general customers. You mentioned like Deer and Unleashed. Is it is that the world you're sort of seeing those sort of product management inventory solutions? 
where you can like that's the, some of the real value of linking in with those and then being the connector into the uh, accounting software, etc. Yeah, we, we we sit across both. I mean, both are equally as important to us. I think the the um, the inventory systems obviously have just more of our type of customers in in them. Um, so um, naturally, being listed in their in their various app stores, um, the inventory systems, you know, you know, you've got a suitable customer. Um, you know, we we integrate with um, Zero and QuickBooks and Myob and Myob Advanced, et cetera, as well. Um, those type of those type of platforms, you know, we've got customers across all of them. And um, but look, the vast majority are, are, are zero and uh, zero and Deer Systems or zero and Unleashed really is the you know the tech stack that we um, that we see a lot of. And how have you found like integrating and obviously like the zero app store is, is a is a really good marketing and exposure tool, full stop. But how, how do you find getting involved with those guys like the uh, the zeros and the Deers and Unleashed? Like because I think there might be some um, people thinking they've got. A, uh, a problem they could solve some tech and and, and thinking about yeah, getting involved sure. with these people how have you found that so um so it all depends on your solution depends on your tech team but um we found it a really good experience with all of them so um zero zero had have obviously been doing this for a long time they've got a really a really slick process and you know they've got um and they give you great ideas so one of the ideas they gave us was around um, our reconciliation and they kind of, um, which was the best thing for us, but, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't allow us to go live until we'd built a certain type of reconciliation feature, which is just incredible where, um, you know, obviously with your audience, I can kind of go into a bit more depth here with this, but um, reconciliation feature, whether the payments come from, you know, direct debit or credit card, and they can come over the course of a number of days. Um, it's the old kind of sits in, sits in a clearing account. Um, and then the expenses or the fees sit in a transaction fee account. Um, and then, you know, as soon as the funds get dispersed, everything gets reconciled in one click. And that's, that to me, you know, we've got suppliers that take 40 and 50 payments in a day. For them to be able to reconcile them in one click is, is fantastic. And we would never have um, gone and built that unless we had zero. And, 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 and the, um, the head of the zero app store is actually over in the UK. And um, he, we caught up with him on five or six calls at you know eight nine o'clock ten o'clock at night, and he was just outstanding and um, kind of gave us some great ideas. So it was really really beneficial. Who is that then? Give him a shout out. Um, uh, James Coleman. Yeah, James Coleman. Yeah, I know James. Yeah, yeah. good guy. Good absolute, guy. Absolute absolute legend. Great guy. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so um, that's quite a good overview. Is, is there anything coming up that you're really excited about, whether it's short term or longer term? Is there anything you're thinking, you know, wow, it's really going to benefit our, our customers? Yeah. So, look, um, product wise, the key thing for us is building the building the international products. Um, the, obviously, every you know every country has its own has its has its nuances, and um, they've got their terminology and ways of working and all that type of thing. So, we need to be really close to the product for that. Um, and be close to you know taking all the feedback and talking to the customers and talking to the suppliers and all the rest of it, which is a really time consuming, but a really um, but it's the only way to build early on. You just need to you need to be taking direct feedback. It can't go through anyone else. So you know I do I I did or I did and I do do all of the um, all the feedback calls and all the customer support calls. Still, um, we've got a small team, but. Um, you know, our products are good product with scale and all that type of thing. It's very, um, very easy to use. And, you know, suppliers really get the hang of it within three or four weeks. So um, for me, we, we do check-ins all the time with our suppliers and we get a lot of feedback. And really, we haven't built anything that we, um, we thought of or wanted to build in a, a couple of years now. It's been literally, we've just been building from, from feedback the entire time, which is, you know, uh, it's, quite, it's quite good for the product team because, they get given a lot of work and they don't have to really think of anything. It's, 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 they, just have to, they just have to try and find a solution to build the, build what, uh, what our customers want. Yeah, yeah, so it's very much community led in terms of feedback and they're giving you the direction. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really nice when you're in that agile position, I think, as a, as a product, sure. those early days where, you know, the, the early adopters of these types of tools can, can really sort of influence where this product goes. And uh, it's a good time to get involved in those. And when these products get bigger, you lose that sort of, uh, you get, become more rigid and a bit more structured and you lose that flexibility. So it's good times when you can sort of be involved in those, uh, those sort of conversations and, and instructions. Yeah, absolutely. And like, uh, we're not the type of product where we, um, you know, where we, um, where we, 
can afford to just leave people to their own devices. It really, it does take a little bit of, it takes some, um, a, a little bit of work, you know, the onboarding and, 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 um, and configuration and stuff is literally less than 30 minutes. So it's really, really fast, but we'd really like to spend time with them, um, the suppliers early on because it just, it creates, it creates a, a nice runway for us to be able to actually number one um, for our own business to be able to see their success. Their success means our success because they're going to stay on the platform longer. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're a, a monthly subscription, so we have to do a good job or else people will leave. Um, so for us, you know, that's, that's really everything. Just spend the time, understand them and build what they want. The music to, to the ears of people listening, because uh, I think they like getting involved in, in businesses in that way um so in terms of like we've mentioned some integrations uh, that you link up with like what what are you linking in with i know you mentioned some of the accounting but just like what's the what's the core list just so we're clear because i think we've, we've mentioned them in passing but just for people who are listening uh yeah, what's, sure. the, so, what's that list so the list is um the list is um we in, we integrate from an accounting perspective we integrate with um zero myob myob advanced and um, QuickBooks, and we're um, we're looking to build out um, Sin Seven and Netsuite in the first half of first half of of, um, of calendar year 2022. And then uh, from an inventory perspective, you've obviously got um, Netsuite, which is coming up, which covers both, and as does um, MIB Advanced. But um, Deer Systems and and uh, and Unleashed are our our two inventory platforms that we integrate with today, and they're really good and both both thriving and. Um, and then from a from a sales and CRM perspective, um, there's a platform called Peppery, which is um, which is uh, it's an Israeli platform, um, and they've got um, distributors in Australia, and we're working closely with their Australian distributors, and we've got you know three or four customers now that are on Peppery, and um, it's really good for a for a field driven sales team and um, and BDMs, and um, we also integrate with Equifax from a from a um, credit reporting perspective, so. Part of the part of the part of the um, concern of a lot of the suppliers is to be able to adequately manage the credit risk that's associated with them giving out all this stock and not not seeing any cash for you know 30 days or 30 days of the um, 30 days after the next month. So for us, um, being able to offer you know streamlined credit checks in so in platform. So so before a supplier approves an application form, they can just click a button. They get sent the Equifax check with. Um, with the you know credit score and all the different um, details about directors and and uh, and company information, so it's very um, very detailed and, and gives really good information really fast, and that's really the key. The the speed in which people can do things on on the platform is the time saver, and the time saver is is everything these days. Yeah, I think as well that that visibility, that that due diligence on the credit. Um, it one is laborious if you do do it, and I think in general, a lot of the product businesses I've worked with over the years just don't, you know, just take a, a punt that everyone's going to be okay and they'll get the blanket same amount of terms as everybody else, and mm. sort of fingers crossed that that's going to that's going to work. So uh, I can definitely see that being a benefit, that informed decision on how we're going to work with this uh, with this client supplier um, is is really important. I think. Absolutely. I think, um, look, look, our advice to, to, to every single supplier that we work with, and we, we, as I said, we work closely and the advice is always, you got to make sure that you get a, a, a signature on a piece of paper with the right information on it. That's the first thing. And then you need yeah. to fi find a way to deter bad behavior. You need to do something to make sure that you can get the customer to act the way you want them to act and to act the way that it says that they will act in the agreement. And that's either through holding some security, be it a you know personal guarantee or or something like that, or an asset, or or it's about um, capturing a, a payment method. You know um, what we say is you either got to do a credit check to 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 um, suit yourself and make sure that you're you're confident, or you need um, a guarantee. So um, even if the shit hits the fan, then you've always got the ability to go um, to go personally, and then. Um, but the main thing is, if you get a payment method with um, with ninety percent of your customers, ninety percent of your customers will pay on time every time, and that's the that's really the the core to our business. And one thing that has changed in the product supply wholesale business is um, they weren't doing they weren't doing this very much at all prior, and that's really the the core difference um, to our platform to to you know 
the very few competitors that we've got out there in our space. It's just, they haven't focused on payments and credit applications or payments and onboarding. They've just focused on one or the other. And I really think that they need to be joined. They are one and the same. You know, if you've got a, if you've got a, um, if you go and get a personal loan tomorrow, they're going to ask you for a, you know, your ID and your, you just sign a contract and then you're going to have to do a risk assessment and then they're going to try and get some security or a personal guarantee from you. But they're also going to collect your bank account details to debit the repayments from. And that's a good credit business. So we try and uh, mirror that. It's, um, I, so it's, a, it's a really neat idea. Um, so, so the people uh, listening in the audience to this will be accountants, bookkeepers globally. How do they get into, how do you work with them? How do, how do they get into contact you? Like what's, what's the deal with you uh, working with those guys? Yeah, sure. So look, we've got a number of um, accounting and bookkeeping partners, and we've also got a lot of you know cloud integration partners, um, which you know a lot of them used to be accountants and bookkeepers and went into you know more the app advisory yeah. and tech tech side of things. And um, one thing that we we're about is we create really good relationships with them, and they can come to us with anything, and we can um, you know give them advice on on if the customer is going to be suitable and we'll tell them straight away if the customer is going to be suitable suitable or not because um there's 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 no point um wasting people wasting people's time for a customer that won't stay and and won't get um won't get you know something out of it so um we create partnerships we've got a partnership program um and the way that works and we've got probably about 15 or 16 partners that we work with so far and you know we've got a quite a small group and uh, that group's built out a fair bit at the start of this year. And um, basically, we, you know, they can introduce us at any point. Sometimes it's during the actual implementation stage of implementing new software. Um, they might be shifting away from, uh, you know, there was the, a bit of a debacle with QuickBooks and uh, QuickBooks and, and um, you know, and, um, and them, um, them uh, discontinuing um, Trade Gecko when they when yeah, they bought yeah. it, um, a lot of that, that meant a lot of um, a lot of migration across the um, Deer and Unleashed. So we worked with a lot of the um, implementation partners and the and the accountants um, to be able to you know to be able to work with them and to kind of time it right so we could have the solution ready at the same time when they were ready to launch everything else. Um, and that meant kind of re-onboarding all their customers properly with the new information onto the new, the new systems, which was which is so we we do it that way. But we also you know, we also do a lot with um, existing customers that are up and going already. And, um, you know, we, because we can slot in there in 30 minutes and they can be up and rolling in 30 minutes and it can really significantly change their business and their cash flow. So a lot of the accountants see it as a really, really good bonus to be able to do that. And, and how do they connect with you? With it, like through website? Uh, app store like what's the what's the what's the what yeah the best i mean way? they can the best i mean the best way um they can email me tim at pencilpay.com it's a nice easy one um <laughs> or they can or they can go to our website we've got a booking form on the website i'm you know more than happy to spend as much time as as needed to you know have these conversations and you know we can do demos and set everyone up with a demo account that's what we usually do and you know um, we've we've got we've got um we've got certain certain integrators and accountants that 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 use this type of stuff in their business now um so you know which is which is really good to see so we you know we encourage people to to learn it and um you know and we can the way that we work with them we can they can either take over and do the implementation or we can do the do the implementation and training ourselves um we do that a lot of the time so um for us it's very second nature Tim, that's been so uh, eye-opening and enlightening uh really interesting to hear uh, about a very sort of niche solution, I think at the moment um, I'm not hearing a lot of those types of solutions. So it's it's been great to to have you on. Um, so thanks a lot for your for your time and some of your evening tonight. No, thanks so much for having me on. Really appreciate it. And um, and uh, yeah, thanks. I'll, I'll look for when you hit the UK. I think we'll have another another chat. Be good to to see what you're doing when you, when you come yeah, into the, these shores because. Uh, we've got quite a few people, so I'd, I'd be mega interested to hear at that point when, when you're ready. Uh, but you know what software yeah. roadmaps are like, you know, hopefully they're three months, sometimes they're six months, sometimes they're a bit longer, right? So yeah, we uh, we usually hit our number. We we, uh, we usually hit our roadmap, which is good. I've got a um I've got a software developer partner who uh, who hates hates when I tell people that stuff's gonna be ready early. <laughs> so I've I've learned my lesson the hard way a few times. <laughs> right, Tim, that's been brilliant. Thanks a lot for your time, mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Cheers.